Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Yogaha Karmasu Kaushalam Hello friends, this is Dr. Neelam Panchal from Gujarat University and I welcome you all in this session on Vanti Capital and Lease Financing. Let me introduce you to the topic. Friends, starting new ventures are occupying prime imagination of the world now, providing financial support to startups and other business ventures in different fields is a risky business. Also, it provides high growth opportunities for the investors who provide money for the startups. Venture funding is a funding process in which the venture funding companies manage the funds of the investors who want to invest in a new businesses which have the potential for the growth in the future. The venture capital funding firms provide the funds to startups in exchange for the equity stake. Such a startup is generally one that possesses the ability to generate high returns. Many a times, firms go for leasing assets rather than purchasing all the assets. Friends, in this session, we would try to learn about venture capital, its evolution, features, processes and structure and the phases of venture capital. In addition, we would also learn the concepts of lease financing and related terms. Let me explain you the objectives of the session. Friends, the objectives of the sessions are to explain you the meaning and evolution of venture capital, to explain the features of venture capital financing in India, to make you understand process and structure of venture capital to understand the stages or phases of venture capital in India and to explain the meaning, merits, demerits of leasing. Let's start with understanding the word venture capital. Friends, as the name suggests, venture capital is a capital to start a venture. Venture capital is the provision of capital for business ventures. It supports entrepreneurial talent with the funds and business skills to exploit market opportunities with an aim to obtain capital gains. Since it is capital before start of an enterprise, the success of the enterprise is not assured. So, it is a very high risky capital. Venture capital thus is called a high risk capital. Let's try to understand evolution of venture capital in India. Friends, evolution of venture capital in India is divided into four phases. This image specifies the evolution of venture capital in India. In fact, this is divided into four phases. Phase 1 that is pre-1995. Phase 2 is from 1995 to 97. Phase 3 is from 1998 to 2001. And phase 4 is 2002 onwards. If you try to do the growth of the number of the firms, it has started from 8 in phase 1 to more than 75 in phase 4. And if you look into the stages of the development of the venture capital in India, just try to look into here primary stages. It talks about in phase 1, seed, early stage and a development. Phase 2 is stock account development. And phase 3 is talking about early stage and development. And phase 4 is talking about growth or maturity. So, somewhere if you try to look into this statement, you can look into that the number of transactions for the venture capital in India is increasing day by day. And thus, starting from 1995, 
to today, the growth of the venture capital in India has enormously increased. Now, let us try to understand the features of venture capital financing in India. Friends, the venture capitalists finance new and quickly growing business ventures and entities. Venture capital financing takes higher risk and with the expectation of higher rewards while making investment. The venture capital financing often purchase equity securities of the entities they invest money. It helps in the development of new products or services and acquire technologies. The venture capital helps development of new products or services and acquire technologies. The active participation in the companies venture capitalists invest and thus helps the growth. Friends, the investment is a long term in nature and investing in equity is also a long term in nature. Now, let us try to understand process and structure of venture capital. Friends, process of venture capital consists of a number of steps that are undertaken by venture capitalists while investing in a company. They include number one, deal origination. Friends, deal origination referral system is an important source of information for venture capitalists regarding the potential investors. Second is a screening of proposals. In fact, it is regarding their size of investment, geographical location and a stage of financing is done for those proposals which are of interest to the venture capitalist. Third is the evaluation and a due diligence. Friends, the risk and returns are estimated and a due diligence is done which is a very very important stage. And the fourth is a deal structuring. On the basis of the terms of the deals are decided and this includes details such as amounting of funding, the share of the company, the contracts and so on. Venture capitalists negotiate deals to ensure a returns commensurate with the risk, control the organization, minimize taxes, assure liquidity and the right to replace the management in case of poor performance. Next is post investment activities and exit. Venture capital involve themselves in major decisions and steer the company towards exit as and when it is required. So exit can be in four ways initial public offer, acquisition by another company and a repurchase of the venture capital share by the investing company, purchase of the venture capital share by third party. So in nutshell, we have tried to look into how the deal is happened. Now let us try to understand stages of venture capital. Friends, venture capital finance is always in a stages. As per the progress of the company, venture capitalists try to provide the funds. The first stage is known as seed or startup stage financing. This stage is a relatively small amount of capital provided to an inventor or entrepreneur to prove a concept. If the initial steps are successful, these may involve product development, market research, building a management team and developing a business plan. This is a pre-marketing stage. So in this stage, if the company is doing better, that is an indication that company may go further in a better way. And then the next stage of financing come, which is called early stage financing. This stage provides financing to companies completing development where products are mostly in testing or pilot introduction. Here, in some cases what happens is products may have just been made commercially available. Companies may be in the process of organizing or they may already be in the business for three years or less. So somewhere usually such firms will have made market studies, assemble the key management, develop a business plan and are ready to or have already started conducting business. 
This involves the first round of financing following startup, which includes an institutional venture capital fund. Friends, seed and startup financing tend to involve angel investors more than institutional investors. The networking capabilities of the venture capitalists are used more here than in more advanced stages. Next is a expansion or a mid-stage financing. Friends, this stage involves applying working capital to the initial expansion of a company. The company is now producing and shipping and has growing accounts, receivables and inventories. It may or may not be showing a profit. Some of the uses of capital may include further plant expansion, marketing or development of an improved product. More institutional investors are likely to, to be included along with initial investors from previous rounds. Friends, the venture capitalist role in this stage involves a switch from a support role to a more strategic role because somewhere or the other way any venture capitalist would require profitability and that is why they are providing a finance for establishing a venture. The next would be a later stage capital. Friends, in this stage it is provided for companies that have reached a fairly stable growth rate. That is, the companies that are not growing as fast as the rates attained in the expansion stages. Again, these companies may or may not be profitable but are more likely to be profitable than in the previous stages of the development. Friends, other financial characteristics of these companies include positive cash flow. This includes companies considering IPOs. Now, let us try to understand factors determining the venture capital requirements. Friends, we have seen the stages of the financing but in each stage depending upon what is the requirement of the fund, the finance is provided and there are various factors determining the venture capital requirement. There are many factors which determine the total capital requirement for a newly set up business like size of the business, nature of the business and the total available resources and so on. The factors which are necessary for determining the venture capital requirement includes first is the nature of business. Friends, requirement of venture capital changes as per the nature of the business. For example, public utility undertakings have less requirement of fund because it has cash sales after supplying services such as water, electricity and so on. And the firms which are engaged in the financial services requires few funds to be invested into its inventory because there is no question of inventory in those type of firms. But firms engage into manufacturing those goods which are tangible needs a huge capital for investing into fixed assets such as plant, machinery, land and so on and for investing into inventory. Next is the size of the firm. Friends, if the size of the firm is small, it needs a less working capital. But if the size of the firm is big, it needs a large amount of working capital and accordingly the requirement of venture capital would be changing. The third is a length of production cycle. Friends, some firms need short length of production cycle while there is no much equipment and a requirement of the capital to be invested in the inventory. On the other hand, some firms have a longer production cycle and these companies need a large amount of working capital. Next is a seasonal variations. Friends, in a busy season, firms need more working capital and in a stock seasons, it needs less working capital. So, the firm has to arrange this capital according to the needs and requirements of the seasonality of the firm. So, by now we are clear with the stages and we are clear with the factors determining the venture capital in a firm. 
Now the another important source of finance is a leasing. Let's try to understand the meaning of the leasing. Friends, a famous quote by Donald B. Grant says, Why own a cow when the milk is so cheap? All you really need is milk and not the cow. The concept of lease is influenced by this quote. We can compare milk with the rights to use an asset and the cow with the asset itself. What happens is ultimately a person who wants to manufacture a product using machinery can get to use that machinery under a leasing arrangement without owning it. And that is why leasing is a famous. Why? Because in the initial stages, you require lot of capital. You require a huge capital investment to be made in a fixed assets, in the preliminary expenses for starting an enterprise. And somewhere leasing is a better source of financing. Let's try to understand types of leasing. First is a financial lease. Friends, Financial lease is for a long period provides for the use of the asset during the primary lease period which devotes almost the entire life of the asset. The lesser assumes the role of a financer and hence services of the repairs, maintenance and so on are not provided by him. The legal title is retained by the lesser who has no option to terminate the lease agreement. And the principal and the interest of the lesser is reoccupied and recouped by him during the desired payback period in the form of lease rentals. The finance lease is also called capital lease is a loan in disguise. Next is operating lease. Friends, in operating lease, the asset is wholly amortized during the non-cancellable period of the lease and where the lesser does not rely for its profit on the rentals in the non-cancellable period. In these type of lease, the lesser who bears the cost of insurance, machinery, maintenance, repair cost and so on is unable to realize the full cost of equipment and other incidental charges during the initial period of the lease. Friends here, the lessee uses the asset for a specified time. The lesser bears the risk of obsolescence and incidental risks. Next is a sale and a lease back leasing. To raise the funds, a company may sell an asset which belongs to the lesser with whom the ownership vests from there on. Subsequently, the lesser leases the same asset to the company that is the lessee who uses it. The asset thus remains with the lessee with the change in the title to the lesser, thus enabling the company to procure the much needed finance. Next is a sales aid lease. Friends, in a sales aid lease, the lesser agrees with a manufacturer to market his product through his leasing operations in return for which the manufacturer agrees to pay him a commission. Next is a specialized service lease. In specialized service lease, the lesser provides specialized personal services in addition to providing its use. Next is a cross-border lease. Friends, lease across the national frontiers is called a cross-border leasing. The cross-border leasing is gaining greater importance in the areas like aviation, shipping and other costly assets which base likely to come absolute due to technological changes. Friends, after looking into this, now let us try to understand the advantages and disadvantages of leasing. According to the types of the leasing, actually the advantages and disadvantages varies. Let's try to understand first advantages of leasing. The first is a cash outflow is balanced. Friends, the main advantage of leasing is that cash outflow or 
payments related to leasing are spread out over several years. Hence, saving the burden of the one-time significant cash payment, it helps a business to maintain a steady cash flow profile. Second is a quality assets. When leasing an asset, the ownership of the asset still lies with the lesser, whereas the lessee just pays the rental expense. It becomes plausible for a business to invest in a good quality assets which might look unaffordable or expensive. Next is a usage of capital is better. A company chooses to lease over investing in an asset by purchasing, it releases capital for the business to fund its other capital needs or to save money for better capital investment decision. Next advantage is a tax advantage. Friends, leasing expense or a lease payments are considered as operating expenses and hence of interest are tax deductible. Next is off balance sheet debt. In fact, although lease expenses get the same treatment as that of interest expense, the lease itself is treated differently from debt. Leasing is classified as an off balance sheet debt and does not appear on the company's balance sheet. Next is it leads to a better planning. Friends, lease expenses usually remain constant for over the asset's life or lease tenter or grow in a line with inflation and thus it helps in planning expense or cash outflow when undertaking exercise because somewhere you are clear well in advance about your expenditure that is going to happen for the item called a lease rental. Next is a capital expenditure is low. Friends, this is very important advantage. Leasing is an ideal option for a newly set up business given that it means lower initial cost and a lower capex requirements. Next is a risk of obsolescence. For operating in the sector where there is a high risk of technology becoming obsolete, leasing yields greater returns and saves the business from the risk of investing in a technology that might soon become outdated. For example, it is ideal for the technology business. Next is termination rights. Friends, the lessee holds the right to buy the property and terminate the leasing contract, thus providing flexibility to business. Now, after looking into the advantages, let us try to understand what are the disadvantages of leasing. First is lease payments. Friends, lease payments are treated as expenses rather than as equity payments towards an asset. Next is limited financial benefits. Friends, while making lease payments towards a land, the business cannot benefit from any appreciation in the value of land or for that matter in a case when the use of asset does not serve the requirement after some years lease payments become a burden and somewhere it is not giving any capital appreciation even if the rise in the price of asset happens. The next is debt. Friends, leasing does not appear on the balance sheet of a company. Investors still consider long-term lease as a debt and adjust their valuation of business to include leases. Next is access to other loans are limited. Friends, investors treat long-term leases as debt. It might become difficult for a business to tap capital markets and raise further loans or other forms of debt from market. Next is documentation and processing. Friends, lease agreement is a complex process and requires thorough documentation and a proper examination of an asset being leased. In fact, there is no ownership towards the asset. What happens is the lessee does not end up becoming the owner of the asset 
though quite a good sum of payment is being done over the years toward the asset. Next is maintenance and operation of an asset. So friends, what happens is the lessee remains responsible for the maintenance and proper operation of the asset being leased. So it becomes very difficult because he has to give a lease rental as well as he has to look into the operation and the maintenance of the asset. So somewhere it may become expensive for a business person. The next is limited tax advantage. Friends, the tax expense is likely to be minimal. In these circumstances, there is no added tax advantage that can be deprived from leasing expenses. Simply, lease rental is an expense for the company and so there is no tax advantage. Now, after looking into the advantages and disadvantages of leasing and understanding the venture capital as a concept, let me summarize the session. Friends, Considering the high risk involved in the venture capital investments complementing the high return expected. Entrepreneurs should do a thorough study of the project being considered, weighting the risk return ratio expected and then should decide to go for a better source of finance. Venture capitalists primarily they invest in a young high-tech companies that have a capacity for a rapid growth that has a better growth opportunities in the future and that can give a better profitability to the venture capitalist. We have tried to see that venture capitalists are a type of financial intermediary that perform three main functions which includes screening potential investments and deciding on companies to invest in monitoring these companies and providing value-added services for them and existing their investments in these companies by selling their stake to the public markets or another buyer. Somewhere we have seen that venture capital is a form of private equity which is an investment that cannot be traded in public markets. Without the information flow and liquidity of the public markets, venture capital investing offers greater opportunities for both huge gains and terrible losses. We have also seen the leasing on the other hand as one of the important source of finance as it serves purpose of investing in assets. When you are going for leasing, you need not to invest in an asset. And when you purchase an asset, you require a huge capex, which is not required in case of while you go for leasing. We have seen that leasing are of different types. Depending upon the requirement of the firm, they select appropriate leasing. And so, depending upon that, the firms are trying to invest in leasing. So friends, by now I hope you are clear with the fundamentals of the venture capital and leasing. If you have any question or query related to the venture capital and leasing, 